Hello, I'm Stephen Colbert. I'm an English and English language teacher in Melbourne, Australia. I'm going to give you a little bit of a recount of what happened during the pandemic in Melbourne, Australia. Uh, the, the positive thing was, I guess, uh, as many of the other countries sort of uh, got COVID and worked out that it was happening, we in Australia were a little bit protected as an island nation. We had a little bit more time to prepare. Um, but as a result, we were in schools and we were hearing slowly emerging stories from uh, different places around Australia where cases were happening. And in America, there was already a big discussion and in uh, New Zealand as well around how cases were being spread in schools and students could get it, could they get it? We weren't sure at that point. Um, so on an average day at the beginning there, we would be, uh, we'd teach our class all happy, smiling, everything's going great kids. And then we'd head into the staff room and we'd all sit there on our phones. We'd have um, press conferences uh, like playing on the TV on our screens uh, and we'd all be sort of discussing what's gonna happen. How can we do this? Are we safe? Uh, you know, I've called it doom scrolling or panic scrolling at the time. We kind of, we were constantly refreshing what's happening. How many cases, where are they? Are they near us? All those sort of things were happening. And then eventually the change was made and we, we all went home, took our things essentially. Uh, and in Melbourne, we've, uh, we were world leaders in being locked down. So um, we were in our, we were unable to leave our homes for somewhere between 280 plus days. And that included about 180 or so days of online teaching. So a really, really, really long, long duration of online teaching. Um, and for me personally, the uh, similar to Bob who puts these wonderful videos together, I've always been using what I call instructional video. So there's a lot of footage of me on the internet teaching my students concepts on YouTube that are freely available. Uh, so then all of a sudden when they said, oh, you have to teach online, I sort of thought, well, uh, and I've, I've been preparing for this my whole life. So there's um, 600 plus videos sitting there waiting. Uh, and the, the, one of the positives, as, as we've been doing it for so long, our students sort of, their energy levels waned and waxed as we sort of went through the process. And so quite often teachers would say things like the, uh, you know, my students never speak in class and all those sort of things. Um, but for me personally, if and when that did happen, which wasn't that often, fortunately, um, I could just click record on my class uh, and then with a little bit of, a, of editing, crop out my students, crop out any points where they jumped in and, you know, had their say or contributed. Um, but if there was a really quiet class, that, that could become instantly become a video that I could then use the years going on, uh, sort of flipped or blended learning, the idea that students can do the learning at any point. Um, one of the things I did, for example, was we were studying Macbeth. So each act and each scene of the entire play of Macbeth has a two or three super short video of me kind of explaining in the way I would in a class, very colloquially, very casually. So there's this guy, Macbeth, and he's got his wife, Lady Macbeth, and this time they do this, you know, very simple explanation and some key annotations for them to do. Um, so that's been a really, uh, for me, not, not too strenuous or stressful a, a transition from teaching face-to-face -to, -face to teaching online because I had the resources already there. Um, as a rule, I think in Australia, we did reasonably well. We're all relatively well connected. We all have devices already. Every school's either a Google or Microsoft or a Zoom school or Apple or some variation on those things. Um, so each school sort of just ramped up what they were doing already to make it uh, make it online, I guess. Um, but overall, I think uh, for me, the biggest change was typically once or twice a year, I'd travel over to Cambodia with an organization called Teachers Across Borders Australia. And so that, of course, ground to a halt very quickly. Um, and the difficult thing at the moment is thinking of ways that we can uh, start to return to uh, Cambodia itself or to other nations as well, um, with the difficult part being, of course, that you know, there's the official numbers, uh, but there's also, you know, the reality on the ground, which could be much worse. Uh, Cambodian being one of the most uh, corrupt nations, unfortunately, in the world. So you can't necessarily trust the case numbers and those sort of things there. Um, so we've done a little bit of online delivery of instruction to teachers, training teachers over there, um, but we're still looking for different ways. It might have to be within Australia or different ways forward for us. But overall, the... Uh, the lockdown approach to teaching was probably a little bit soul destroying, to be completely honest. As teachers, we sort of thrive off that, um, the light bulb moment, the sort of the hairs on the back of the neck standing up when the students get it, or they sort of take leaps and bounds in their progress. And that was much harder to see uh, during long, 
lockdown remote learning as we call it here but overall it's uh it's overly exciting to be back in class now now that our long lockdown has ended uh we've got in melbourne 90 percent double vaccinated so we feel reasonably comfortable with the way things are going and that it's you know the right time to open back up and to continue teaching our students in the good old-fashioned way.